I, I, my first initial feeling is we're back in 2010, except this time they've got two maxes, which they weren't able to do back in 2010. But this is essentially what this is. This feels like, you know, they try to rebuild, and it's just, it's not going to happen. So swing for the fences and go get KD and Kyrie. You know, and they weren't going to get one by themselves. Both those guys made it clear they weren't coming here alone. And it's been a rumor for a long time. Now, the other rumor that has finally come to fruition, which we've all been worried about, and it's something that, you know, to me is, is really upsetting, is the fact that this guy you bled for, 17-win season, and drafted Chris Porzingis, and this guy essentially just started putting out those that, that sense that he didn't want to be here, that he didn't either trust the franchise, right. what he went through with Phil Jackson, what he saw, what happened with Carmelo Anthony, and he had enough people in his ear, which includes his brother, uh, who means well, uh, but I never really, I, every time I tried to talk to the guy and I tried to, you know, e even just sometimes you just try to help people out, like get, let him get a lay of the land. He always seemed like he was smarter than you or acted like he was smarter than you. Well, we'll see how smart he is. I mean, it's a good move for him because they, Luka Doncic and KP are very good friends, very close. And if you're Mark Cuban, who was, by the way, in New York last night, he was at the Garden right. last night. Mark Cuban, this is brilliant for him because it definitely resets their franchise. Mm -hmm. It gives them two European stars. They do very well there. Obviously, Novitsky's been there for 20 years. So this is great for them, and it's a place where you expect Porzingis will sign an extension and stay there. And that's the limited market the Knicks were working with here. So I know I'm all over the place, but I'll begin no. with the fact that this didn't just happen today. All right, the, it leaked today, sure. but this wasn't something that just suddenly was. KP walked in the office and said, I don't like the direction, and they said, fine, we'll trade you. Oh, and ho Dallas just happened to be here last night. Let's send you to them. This has been, this has been in the works for months. Right. And in fact, maybe even the last couple of days when something was able to come up on, on this and turn it into a deal that the Knicks looked at and said, we get a young point guard that they, they know they should have taken in the draft that year, and they didn't. They get the, the caps. I mean, moving Tim Hardaway Jr.'s contract, that, that almost seemed impossible to do without giving up a first round pick. Now, I don't know what the picks are involved, but I do believe the Knicks are getting picks in this deal. Uh, and yet moving these contracts, and now they have two maxes. And now they can look at Durant and Kyrie, who do want to play together, and say, you guys want to come to New York. You both are basketball guys. You both love this city and love the history of basketball. Come save the franchise. Be the guys that we make statues for in the next five years. That's essentially what's happening here. And yet they still have a young core mm -hmm. of players, which, again, 2010 was different. 2010 was scorched earth, only one, only one max, and LeBron was the guy. LeBron or bust. Then they had no young players. They really didn't have anything else going on except for a coach with a system and LeBron. This time around, they're a little bit smarter. They've got young players. They've got a lottery pick that still could be Zion Williamson. And now they have two maxes to go after two of the biggest names in the game. So we'll see if this time it works. Now, I used the analogy earlier because the fans, some of them are up in arms about the deal because they're just going to go under the assumption they're not going to be able to get the free agents because they never get the free agents. Right. But you, sometimes you got to ask the girl out at the bar. You, even though you think she's going to say no, you still have to oh, ask. Don, you got well, you to be in the game. I exactly. always say this. you, you got to be in the game. And those who say, well, it's no use, you're never going to get the guy. Let's look back at the reasons why they never got the guy. Because no guy was coming here by himself. No one ever. Melo came because Amari was already here. Amari came because they gave him a ton of money and there was no other options for him at that time. Like, this was his best option. But when you're talking about, like, top ten, top five players, they're not coming here by themselves. It's too hard to do alone. It's the heaviest jersey in the, in the NBA. You put it on, it weighs you down. So you can't do this alone. Everybody knows it. They saw what Melo went through. And so that's why the Knicks had to say, if we're going to get one, we got to get two. There's only one way to do it. And you had a guy who clearly, guys, did not want to be here. And I can't understand for life me why. And he's a pain in the A. I cannot a. understand. And he's a pain in the A also. Let me ask you, Alan Hahn, our Knicks expert, the Knicks guy, how would you grade this trade for the Knicks? That's a, oh, God. I hate, I, I just hate it because they traded him. I really do. I hate it because they traded him. So you um, liked him. You thought he was going to be great. I want, I, well, I wanted him to be great. You know what I mean? It's homegrown. This is a guy you just, I wanted him to be great because of the year you go, I mean, 60 loss season, you drop in the draft and yet you get the second best player in that draft class. That's, 
That's pretty damn good. All right, that's but, some fortune there. But it, but knowing they didn't, knowing he didn't want to be here, mm -hmm. and he'll say it all along that he did. He just wasn't sure of the direction. It, it's all a bunch of BS. He didn't want to be here. Right. He didn't want to deal with this. He didn't like criticism. So knowing that, knowing that he didn't want to be here, so let go of the emotion attached to it. How would you grade it? Is this something you could be excited about if you're a Knicks fan? Ask me in July. See, that's it. Uh, See, that's yeah, what's I'm scary. Sorry. That's I'm true, sorry. but that's you what's scary. Me in July. The, you this, can't do the, this now because you don't. It's air. Right. They traded for air, essentially. Yeah. But and isn't Dennis that Smith frightening? Jr. So this could end up being Zion, of course it's Durant, and Irving, or Nate Silver tweeted out, watch, it's going to be Goran Dragic and Chris oh, Middleton. Shut up, Nate. I mean, it Just could end up, up being that. All that stuff is garbage. But Just it could end up being nothing. No, it ends up being you have cap space and you trade cap space then. Then you trade for Damian Lillard. You do whatever you can. This is not going to be where they just throw money at bad players. It's not going to happen. Like, the Nate Silver stuff is garbage. Get that out of my face. I'm not listening to that right now. Well, that, this, is, oh, this is simply about cap space and then what you do with it going forward. Here, so it's air right now. Here's what shocks me, though, Alan. Because this guy was thought of so highly that he was going to be the next big thing in the NBA. You essentially turned him into a salary cap mule. The only way that you could get salary cap space was to include Porzingis yeah. to get well, rid. I mean, that, what else were you going to do? What were you going to do? Well, because because where is he going to go? Because is he signing an extension? If you make a deal with Memphis, is he signing an extension with the Pelicans? But for he's Anthony a restricted Davis? free agent. He's well, not going anywhere. What do you mean he's not going anywhere? He's a restricted free agent means he'll just take the QO and play a year and then leave. Okay, nobody but then, was going to take him without right. the assurance and, and the of an extension. Are, he's already told Dallas he's signing. Well, because it's Luka Doncic, yeah. his best friend. He's going right. to love it there. And, and, and Novitski's there. He's going to love it there. But the bottom line is, is you couldn't trade him to, to the Pelicans for Anthony Davis because he was never going to say to New Orleans, oh, yeah, I'll stay here. Never. And they, so they weren't going to, like, so his value is completely diminished down to a one-year guy because if you did just force a trade to some team that he didn't want to go to, he'd stay there for one final year, then walk. So there's no value there. So you're limited to where you could have sent him. And you knew he would have stayed in Dallas. That's why this didn't happen in the span of the, what, 26 minutes from the first So then what was this about the with tweet? him and his brother meeting today? Did they get wind that I, this I was happening? No, no. This was, this was come on. Okay, this has here, been worked out for a couple so of days. It's damage. just a here, good story to tell. Here's another thing I have to know. All right. Because you're around the... Why, why is he such a punk? He acts like he's a star. He's not he's a star. Not a he's not a punk. But he he's acts a, like a punk. He blows off Phil Jackson. He comes in today, I don't like the way this is going. He but what bad, does he think he is? He has bad influence. He has... His brother. He just doesn't have a... It's... it's I tried. I'm telling you guys. Look, I, I don't like to reveal this stuff publicly. I don't like to act like, you know, I try to... Uh, you know, talk to people. If if somebody doesn't agree with me, I just walk away from it. It's not a big deal. Two summers ago, when all that was going down, I kept. I was trying so hard with this guy. I was trying to tell him this is a bad look. You don't do this in New York. This is not how you're going to be received well. You you know, like the, you guys haven't done anything to act this way. And I was just kind of pushed aside. Like, what do you know? I'm like, what do I know? I've been here my whole life. You've been here for ten minutes. Like, listen to somebody with reason instead of following something you've watched in a movie. It's essentially what's going on here. Like, they just don't, they don't get it. The guy is in New York. He could have been a huge star if he, just, if he just did the simple things. The kid is not a bad kid. That's the problem here. Porzingis is a good kid, and he means well. He wanted to be a star here. I mean, he was fragile. Yes, they had to get him stronger. There's a lot still there that he has to do before he can reach superstardom. But there's so much potential there. I just think he's had some bad influences, and his trust, or their lack of trust, the family especially, lack of trust from Phil Jackson and what happened there and what they saw with Carmelo, it soured him, it soured the family, and they just don't trust, and they also don't like the criticism that comes with playing in New York. It's the fact that when he doesn't play well, he's going to get criticized. There's going to be tweets. There's going to be fans who say things about him, sports talk radio that says stuff about him. He doesn't like that. So it, it just, it's you, I just knew this was coming. I didn't want it to happen. I was hoping it wouldn't. I was hoping when David Fisdale went last summer and visited, spent a whole week with him, letting him know, getting that relationship together and trying to build something forward, you thought he'd have some ownership, he'd care. But he clearly didn't want to be part of this, and he didn't want to be a leader. He didn't want to be the guy that had to wear, had to carry the burden of it. So he's, he's now in Dallas, and the Knicks now half. A huge, I mean, they've got a huge pitch to make in July, hoping, and it starts really now, hoping that they can pull two guys off of two teams that might be in the finals playing against what, each other Here's this year. what I don't get. What's the pitch? What, come play with Kevin Knox? 
No, no, it, no. Come on. Hey, Michael, so it's, it's, it's come play, come be a duo here in the biggest market in basketball on the biggest but stage for will basketball. They have anybody That's around the pitch. them that can help? Or are they going to have to do it alone? It's heavy lifting, even if it's two great players. Well, it's 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 two great players. Let's start with that. That's that's pretty well, damn it's two good. Two great players, two plus the draft. Knox, <laughs> and then possibly with Zion. And if right. you get Zion, or if you get Barrett, or if you get the kid, you know Morant. I mean, you don't know what you're getting. And Dennis Smith's a, a, at least the talent. Knox is going to be. Guys, listen. I know not a lot of people watch them, so I get it. But watch Kevin Knox on a nightly basis, like I do. And there's a ton of mistakes he makes defensively, and he's very young, and he's not in his. He has no, no man strength yet. But the fact that that kid can put up 12, 15 points a night and he, and he's, he doesn't even know what he's doing, it tells you he's going to be good. And this kid, Mitchell Robinson, is going to be a really impactful player once he actually understands how to play basketball. He's 20 years old, and you can see he just runs around out there. There's no, there's no real structure yet. They're just trying to get him reps and teach him stuff. He's, I mean, talk about as green as you could possibly be. That's what he is but right now. So this, there's stuff there. It's just, you know, it takes it a whole offseason to get it together. Is this, this is not 2010. I'm going to tell you that right now. This is not like 2010. That cupboard was bare. This is a lot different. Is this a referendum, though? Do you think that Porzingis didn't like the way Cantor was tr uh, treated? Does Porzingis not like Fisdale? He was laughing last night. I was watching. When Cantor came in and did the whole WWE thing. Yeah, Cantor thing. has to calm down. Well, I mean, he's an emotional guy, too. But um, I, Porzingis was laughing. All right, so I don't think anybody was too upset about anything. And I, I, from what I understand, there's, it's not like there's a real relationship there. You know? Like, this is, this is not that. All right, tell you know. me what happened with Dennis Smith Jr. Why, why, why was he away from the Mavericks? Are they, are they getting damaged goods here? Well, he had the sore back, but really his issue was the fact that they wanted him playing off the ball because Luka dominates the ball now. Now, remember, he had a triple-double last night. Right. So I, it's almost like, did he know something? But that was against the show. Knicks. Yeah, he put on a little show. All right, but still, uh, what, what happened with him was the fact that he got disenchanted. He also has people in his ear. He has influencers as well. And by the way, LeBron James is one of them. That's not a secret. And there were people that said, you know what, you need to get out of there because it's, the ball's not going to be in your hands anymore. They're, they're complaining about the fact that he doesn't fight through screens, that he doesn't do all the little things. He's not a high-percentage shooter. You know, he's, a, he's, a, he's an AU point guard. He needs the ball. He needs to run screen <laughs> rolls. But, Alan, wait, That's let me stop you. So what's he going to be if they have the dream realized and it's Durant and Irving? Yeah. He's not going to well, touch the well, ball. I mean, if it's, well, if it's Kyrie, he's, right. you, you're, he's you're training him. Right. No, you're training him. Yeah, exactly what you're doing. But at least you get a look at him for the last quarter of the season. You know, and didn't that's, that's Kyrie tell Bo Boston that he was staying with them? So that's no longer on the well, table. He told the, he told the Boston crowd. Right. But, I mean, if you've been paying attention to some of the stories coming out of Boston, he keeps hinting to different things. Not him, but people around him keep hinting to, oh, you know, I, I might want to get back with LeBron. And, and he still is interested. It, there was a story out of Boston just recently that the, the Celtics' bigger concern is not the Lakers, but the Knicks, because they are laying in the weeds with the potential to get more cap space, and now that they've got it, there's something real there. There's always been that connection between he and Kevin Durant. They both come to the city. They come to New York in the summers. They play at Rucker. They play at Dykeman. They, play, they love playing summer ball. You saw Uncle Drew. That whole thing was about New York City uh, street basketball. So they both have that appreciation for it. And all you can think now is that if they can make the right pitch, or whatever it is, you know, just here, you guys want to own the city? You'll own it. Come together and you'll own it. That's basically the pitch right now. And if those two guys decide not to and they get shut out, you just continue back to, well, cap space and use it properly and keep playing the young players, I guess. But this is, you know, what else were you going to do yeah. with Porzingis if he didn't want to be here? See that's, see, that's the ultimate point here. And I think a lot of the nitpicking about this is because of the history of the Knicks and the feeling is, oh, of course it's going to fail. It's that, that Jet Met syndrome. Of course the other shoe is going to drop. Of course it's going to fail. Oh, oh expect the worst and hope yeah, for the best. But, but the thing is, you, and they you have every right player. to that. And no listen, question. Porzingis Steve even said that. You have a right to be right. skeptical Absolutely. because history tells you to be skeptical. But you have to eventually make bold moves to change it. There was a time the Patriots were a joke. The Saints were a joke. You know, now these become a perennial. Franchises. You guys yeah. know that, that, that Steph Curry, when he signed his extension and the team traded Monte Ellis, the fans booed the owner and the GM right. for doing that. So the idea is to make the bold move, and, and, and the negative is losing Porzingis, but there is negatives in Porzingis. He mm -hmm. hasn't been able to be on the court. He didn't want to be here. Michael, you called him uh, all kinds of names to start the show. He called him a punk. 
Now, who is this kid to be able to dictate this stuff? And then, you, and now yeah. you've got to dealt that away. I just, don't, like, I hear, I just don't want Porzingis to, to get this label because I'm I sorry, don't. I Alan, think it's the people he, he, who are influencing him. Well, you him. know what? He's allowing it though, so he can't. He can't come free on this. He I can't be completely clean. But, but, but he way, allowed this to happen that, but, in his name. Right, but that's another argument for another day. The point is that if you're like Michael, for you, the apprehension of this deal. What you gave up. If you think the guy's a punk and that, he hasn't been able to stay on the court, then what exactly did they give up? No, no, no. But I believe that there's value out there. People in the NBA think that, I mean, Kevin Durant's the one who called him a unicorn. As I said right. two years ago, if you said you'd get Dennis Smith Jr. and salary cap relief, you'd throw up in your mouth. Well, if I do, you have to understand, it. salary cap relief is one thing. It's two max contract right. slots. They have $74 million. That's a big difference. Like, Michael, Alan, Michael like, 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 that's a lot. For right. the NBA, for today's NBA, especially when you know Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Clay Thompson, his Generation K this summer, those guys are available. There's four guys right there I just named you that if you if you added two of them, you suddenly become a top four team right. in the East. So, you know, we're not saying, you know, some salary cap relief. We're talking about a major amount of money at a time where there's some big names available. And, but as I said earlier, it's air right now Absolutely. until you use it properly. And, and